Welcome back to the channel guys. Today we're going to be talking all about the best smallmouth bass baits that you need to be throwing, especially in the spring. They work all through the year though. I'll throw them in the summer. I'll especially throw these same ones in the fall and even winter for smallmouth bass. If you're interested in fishing any of these baits and want to learn more about it, make sure you hit that subscribe button below. Every bait we're going to talk about today, I'm going to have a full in-depth video coming out on how to do it in the coming weeks. So let's get into it. We're going to talk about my five favorites. Uh, there's going to be a couple on the list I'll mention at the very end as honorable mentions that you should probably have as well, but I didn't want to bring them in for this video. Um, just because I'm really going to be talking about spring bass fishing and how to really find these fish right now. A lot of these baits are going to be search baits. I think only one, maybe two are non-search baits out of this list. The absolute number one bait for smallmouth bass and is probably most talked about more than any other bait for smallmouth bass is going to be a jerk bait. Uh, this one right here is a Rapala Shadow Wrap Deep Yellow Perch color. Number one thing we're going to talk about with smallmouth, they love bait. They, they eat crawfish too, but these real big smallmouth, especially on the Great Lakes or places like that, or if you have a lake with landlocked smallmouth, they love bait fish. That's usually what they're keying on. Um, their number one meal of choice on the Great Lakes is going to be gobies. Uh, number two meal of choice is going to be perch. Uh, if you have a lake that doesn't have gobies but does have perch, their number one meal of choice is going to be perch. And then if you have a lake that doesn't have either of those, a lot of times those lakes, I've seen some, they have like alwive in them or shad. That's going to be their bait of choice. Those smallmouth are going to be a little bit trickier to catch because they love chasing bait. Um, jerk bait is going to be one that can actually tackle that problem though. Uh, they'll move fast. They're more of a pelagic type fish at that point where meaning they like to chase that bait. If that bait is not on that point, there's no fish on that point. They're going to swim wherever that bait goes and just follow it. Um, so that's going to be the theme of colors. You're going to see a lot of whites, a lot of shad patterns, and a lot of perch colors because that's what they like to feed on. And then some of the other baits are going to imitate those gobies and some crawfish or other type of bottom dwelling bait that they might feed on there. So let's start with talking about the jerk bait. Why is it such a good bait for smallmouth bass? Smallmouth bass love to suspend. They're very aggressive. So jerk bait just works really, really well. Um, it's a good bait for cold water smallmouth fishing. It's one that you can cover a lot of water with, which is a key with finding smallmouth. Smallmouth love to get in big groups, so a lot of times you have to spend a lot of time searching for these fish before you actually catch them. And then once you land on them, you can really load the boat because they're usually grouped up pretty well. So using baits that you can cover water with is something that I really like to do for smallmouth. The jerkbait being one of them, it's just something that really draws smallmouth exceptionally well. When it comes to jerkbaits for smallmouth bass, there's only two that I throw. It's going to be the Mega Bass Vision jerkbaits, either the plus one or the regular, depending on the depth of smallmouth that I'm fishing for. A lot of times these fish will get up really shallow on some rocky shoals in like three to five, six, seven, eight foot of water. Um, and that's when I'll just go to the regular one. Or when these fish get out into 12 to 20 feet of water you can especially on clear lakes you can go with this plus one and get it down to them you just want a jerk bait that's going to go four foot deep and then you want a jerk bait that's going to go eight foot deep um, the smallmouth really really love the mega bass jerk baits so if you're just going to pick up one i know they're pricey but they're worth it um, this one is the elegy bone color one thing with smallmouth is they love chartreuse so you can see the chartreuse on that belly there that's a really good color for them and then the standard other colors like the Pro Blues, Tennessee Shads, the Perch color. That's all you're really looking for. Occasionally I'll mix in a bone or a white, um, but that's about it on colors. I keep it fairly simple. I fish this on 10 pound test, 12 pound test, and you're looking for these smallmouth that are grouped up either on rock piles, steep drops where they can move up and down and chase bait, points, anything like that. You're just gonna cover as much water with this jerk bait. My second bait of choice for smallmouth is actually gonna be a crankbait. Again, we're looking for fish, we're searching for them. Let's cover some basics. Again, perch colors and some whites, some natural colors, anything like that, shad patterns. Um, I have some other ones here. You can see those are also shad colored. They're stuck together, but both shad colors there. Um, that's a lot of what we're fishing, just perch colors and shad colors. Um, it is the most vicious bite I've ever had. They hit a crankbait harder than any other fish I've ever fished for. They're a ton of fun catching them on it. Uh, and it's also something that not a lot of people throw for smallmouth bass. A lot of people want to finesse fish them, spinning rods, tubes, stuff like that. Uh, if you want to have some fun with some smallmouth, definitely go get yourself some crankbaits. 
Um, some of my favorites, anything that goes like eight to 12 or even 15 foot deep, that's the range you're looking for. Um, the Strike King Series 5 is a good one. The Spro Little John Baby DD, this one goes 12 foot deep. Chartreuse in blue is gonna imitate that shad, but it'll also imitate a perch really well. Um, so that's a good choice there. This 3XD, um, it's a smaller bait profile. Again, small mouth, even though it, you might be catching a five pound fish, their mouth is only that big on a small mouth. Um, that smaller crankbait is something that they can get a lot easier, um, which brings me to my next favorite crankbait. That's gonna be the Damiki DC 300 right there. Um, they also come in a 200, which goes like eight foot deep. This one goes about 12. A lot of times when you get a 15 foot diving crankbait, you have to get something like this here, where that crankbait is huge. Now the smallmouth will still eat that, but that's just a big crankbait. If you throw this DC 300, I know it's still in the box, but you can see that size comparison there. That bait still goes 15 foot deep, but it's half the size of this other crankbait. So when you're fishing for those smallmouth, you'll get a lot more bites throwing a crankbait like that. You want something that's a little bit finesse besides the crankbait and the jerkbait, something on a, on a calm day when that wind isn't really blowing, the sun's up high, and the, you just need something finesse but still wanna cover water. This is gonna be the bait to go to, and it is gonna be just a Kitex swim bait. Um, that one there is a three inch or 2.8, um, but you can also throw a 3.3 is a common one that I use, and I'll go even up to a 3.8 at some points. A very simple bait to use. Right there is a quarter ounce ball head jig. I use a 3 eighths as well if I wanna get it down a little bit deeper, or a 3 sixteenths if I wanna keep it up a little bit shallower, but quarter ounce is usually what I use the most. I put this on a spinning rod uh, with 15 pound braid and an eight pound fluorocarbon leader, or you can put it on a bait caster with 12 pound test, a light bait caster. Um, that's another way to fish it. And this bait is very simple to use. You're gonna cast this thing out there. You're gonna let it sink to the bottom if they're on the bottom, or you're gonna count it down however far they're suspended, if you think they're suspended, and you're literally just gonna slow wind this back. And they will come up behind it and track it. A lot of times if you reel it and it comes up off the bottom, I'll kill it, let it fall back down. As soon as it starts falling, they'll thump it like a jig. Uh, with it being a single hook, you don't lose too many of them, which is a good good benefit of this bait. And like I said, it's something finesse that not a lot of guys are throwing out there. It's such a basic bait. This is gonna be more of a hybrid. I can fish it fast and try and get some bites, but this bait works best also when you really know where they're at. Being the Mega Bass Dark Sleeper right there, um, this comes in a variety of sizes and weights. I like the 2.8 if I'm not mistaken. It might be a 3.3. Um, this is the half ounce is what I use the most. I know they come in like a three quarter and a one ounce now or even down to a three eighths. But the one that I like to use the most is the half ounce. It allows me to keep bottom contact down there and in front of the fish. The key with this one is going to fish it like a football jig. So you cast it out there and just drag it on the bottom. And the way that tail is, you can see has a lot of movement to it and I'm barely wiggling it. Um, so just dragging it is gonna give it a lot of action and this will imitate any of those bait fish that are down along the bottom. Comes in a variety of colors, like this dark one here. Um, you can imitate a perch uh, or any other type of bait fish that's down there. It could be a goby, even a crawfish, you, who knows? I mean, it's just a, a dark colored bait. Um, or some other popular ones that you can get if your lake has like perch and bluegill or sunfish, stuff like that. Um, that colors like that, they have a few in that range that have um, bluegill colors or, sh or uh, perch colors to them. So those work exceptionally well. Another good one that they have is the chartreuse one. Again, smallmouth love chartreuse, so that's a really good one to throw. And they even have bait fish colors. So like this one would imitate a shad really, really well. Uh, it would also imitate the owl wives really well. And this one has like a nice chartreuse line down the side, so you could even imitate perch with that one too. So these dark sleepers are amazing. Uh, the hook is guarded down in this top fin right here. If you don't know what a dark sleeper is, I'll, I'll walk you through real fast what it is here. So that hook gets buried down in that top fin. When it pops back up, that's the weed guard. So you can drag it through rocks and it doesn't get hung up as much. I mean, it's not a true weed guard. It'll still get hung up but it's better than just having an exposed hook. If you choose not to have this, you can just cut it off and have it as an exposed hook. 
uh, but I like to leave it on there. Doesn't mess with the hookup ratios too much, so it works really, really well. Again, a single hooked bait, so you're gonna get it in that fish's mouth, it's gonna get pinned in there, and you're gonna land those fish almost every time. Again, I fish this one on a bait caster, 12 to 15 pound test, depending on what you wanna do. If you're fishing around some abrasive rocks or zebra mussels on the Great Lakes or anything like that, you're gonna to wanna to go to 15 pound test. Um, but if you can get away with 12, use 12. You'll get more bites, the lighter the line you can use for smallmouth. Again, these are awesome baits, come in a variety of colors and sizes that will fit your needs. So go ahead and check these ones out. Again, I'll probably have everything linked below if you wanna check out any of these baits I talk about today. So the final bait for today, I'm sure if you guessed the baits on this list, you probably would have guessed this one, is going to be the Ned Rig. Um, there is no way that you could ever fish anywhere with smallmouth and not have a Ned Rig. The Ned Rig will always work. I've never been to a place that with smallmouth where the Ned Rig does not work. It works under any water temperature. Uh, the coldest water that you can fish, you can still catch them on the Ned Rig. You just have to fish as slow as possible. I mean, you have to fish so slow with this thing. You can work it faster once you the water start warming up. It comes through rocks really, really well. The only problem is it has that exposed hook, so sometimes you will get hung up with this. You're gonna lose a few of these. They're not very expensive, so get a bunch and just expect to lose a few. But if you wanna get the most amount of bites, you gotta have it down there where the fish live, so you need to be losing some. Comes in a variety of colors. You can imitate anything, crawfish, gobies, perch, all the stuff we've talked about so far. I'm gonna go to a 3 16 or even a quarter ounce head and it get it down there. So it sinks really well with just a quarter ounce weight on it. It doesn't need a lot of weight to keep it down. And then you just need to fish it as slow as possible. And the other thing that's, uh, that I like to do with this bait is once they start getting up shallow and onto beds, I'll go down to like a 1 10 ounce Ned Rig and I'll fish it on their beds and it'll work just as well up there as it did offshore in those rock piles and stuff. If there's gonna be any bait on this list that you need to have, it's gonna be this Ned Rig. No matter where you fish or the type of smallmouth you fish for, this bait will work no matter what, so make sure you get some of these and fish with them on your nearest smallmouth body of water. I hope you enjoyed today's video walking you through some of my favorite smallmouth baits. I use these things all the time. They're the ones I always have tied on no matter where I go for smallmouth, and they're my starting points on smallmouth bodies of water especially those search baits, they really help me find the fish and I can start to dial them in because I know if I can get one to eat the crankbait or the jerkbait, I can slow down with other baits in that area and still catch fish. Um, some of the baits that I was gonna mention but left off the list is like a tube or a drop shot or even a blade bait. Those ones work really well, but they're very specific. You have to know where the fish live. You can't really search for them with those. I like these search baits a lot more, especially with how aggressive smallmouth are. They usually chase very well, so you can get away with fishing a lot of search baits and eventually run into them. And then if you choose to slow down for them, you can. Again, we're gonna be talking about all these baits in depth on a future video, more detail than I left in this video. So hit that subscribe button below if you don't wanna miss those. And thanks for watching.